John Samard, ex-biotech, went public in April at 19. The stock shut up past 30 soon after, but now it's back below the offering price. But before we talk about the stock, I want to hear about the company ex-biotech and cloning. Thank you. Um, we, we've developed a technology that enables us to go and find individuals that have natural immunity against disease. Uh, it, 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 both infectious disease and non-infectious disease. And we can go in and I isolate those precise elements that provide that protection and turn them into drug products. And that's really what we're about. And why does deriving vaccines from humans cause fewer adverse reactions than getting uh, the same thing from sheep or mice or whatever they might clone cells from? That's a very, you know, interesting and actually a profound question. We, we have only about 50,000 genes in the human genome. And antibodies that circulate in your blood that protect you from infectious disease and, and inflammatory disease require about a billion genes or maybe five billion genes or 10 billion genes in an individual. So we can't put all that DNA in our genome. So what the, the immune system does is actually um, engineer and shuffle and rearrange DNA on the spot to make this huge array of, of antibody uh, products. But what happens is that uh, when you start making all of these unique um, substances in the body, some of them are going to cause harm because the body's never seen them before. So you, you actually have to go through a process, your immune system goes through a process where it tests these antibodies that it makes and it gets rid of the ones that hurt you and only keeps the one that, ones that uh, facilitate protection. Uh, that's a really fundamental piece of how the body um, uh, makes antibodies but doesn't cause itself harm in the same time. Um, that process can only take place within the human body because in a guinea pig or a mouse or a rat or a chicken or in a test tube where most antibodies come from now, um, that engineering uh, can't be vetted in the context of the human body. So the only place to get an antibody that is safe and doesn't hurt you is to go into a person and get one of those that were tested and vetted in the, in the human immune system. Sorry, it, it's, hard to, it's hard to say it in a... In oh, a I, I understand, but this week actually you came out with phase two results for your true human antibody and this uh, deals with uh, type 2 diabetes and it found that it lowered um, blood pressure, helped with people's glucose. Can you talk about the timeline on this particular product? Well, you know, and, and there's, there's an example. That antibody came from an individual who had natural immunity against their own inflammatory disease process. So we captured that reactivity and when we tested in diabetes, um, it showed that it removed the inflammatory process that reduces insulin output in the pancreas and reduces insulin sensitivity in the white adipose tissue that's inflamed in these patients. Um, it, it, it's really the first of its kind, a way to approach treating diabetes from curing the disease rather than just supplying insulin. And you know, it, it's a big project for us and, and we'll be going ahead with that uh, in the near future. All right, and then you also have in phase three, Xylonix, which deals with colorectal cancer. So this one's closer to getting to the market. Can you talk about your timeline on this one? That is close to the market. That's a very exciting project. Uh, with that antibody, we were able to um, reduce um, cancer's negative effects on the body, uh, suppress the growth of the tumor by blocking angiogenesis in the tumor, doing all these marvelous things at once with patients feeling better and recovering, which is a really novel thing to see in a cancer therapy. Um, those results uh, in a pivotal phase three study in Europe will be um, um, seen by us later this year. And we hope to be filing for a drug of registration in, in Europe um, by the end of this year. All right, and then finally, you have over $100 million in the bank, no debt, from the IPO. Do you have enough cash to get you to market? Uh, just talk a little bit about your burn rate and whether or not you plan to have any partners because, uh, you know, you are smaller as compared to some of these drug giants out there who might want to buy a company like Bio X Biotech. Well, we're not for sale at, at present, but, you know... Um, it's a hot market, though. It, it, you know, and no one ever says uh, never uh, in this industry, of course. But, 
you, we're well positioned to take this to market. And we're, we're also, you know, actively in, in communication with, with potential partners. But we're at a very interesting intersection um, in how drugs are, are marketed and distributed now in history. And as the internet has touched everything, physicians and patients now are, are learning about drugs and educating themselves through that mechanism. And the, the day of the, the massive set army of sales uh, persons running around with pamphlets and knocking on doctors' doors and educating them about products is gone. So it liberates people to have small teams of, of sales forces. So we're, we're, we're in a good time. And you have enough cash. And we do have enough cash. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming on to talk about X Biotech. Thank you. And thank you for watching The Street.